All right, what is up, my homies, and welcome to Day 2 Grey Gaming. Today, on another episode of the Commonwealth Contractor, we've got a nice, short, easy episode for you. Today, we're going to be talking about handrails. Handrails are one thing that new players often will have trouble with, and it's usually because safety is kind of an afterthought when it comes to our post-apocalyptic builds. We're usually far more interested in settlement defense or building a structure that actually looks realistic. So that's why I decided that this was going to be a great opportunity to play around and show you some of the different ways that you can implement different styles of handrails. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. So let's go ahead and take a look at wood handrails. There are handrails in the wood set, they're just sort of hidden. So other build sets may include handrails in the stairs set, but wood actually has an additional subcategory called miscellaneous. We have a number of different styles of handrails, and I use these pretty often. You saw me use some of these in my Wild West storefront build, and usually when I get into my scrappier builds, I'll often use some of these. And these are pretty, self-explanatory. They will snap directly to flooring. Most of your handrails are designed to snap directly to the outside of flooring. So for instance, if we snap these in and you look at the outside, you can see that they actually snap directly to the outside and go all the way down to the first of the floor layers. Now I am using these foundational floors, so you're not going to notice it that much. But if I were to snap this to this upper layer, they go right down to the base of the floorboards and that's it. So they don't stick below the floorboards. So these are kind of nice for that reason. And we have various different styles to choose from. So you're free to get as scrappy or as clean as you like. None of these are perfectly symmetrical. None of these are perfectly clean looking. However, you do have kind of a gambit that you can run from this absolutely cobbled together and crumbling mess to this sheet of semi rot and plywood all the way up to these where even though they're a little less symmetrical, they're not completely level or spaced right they are a lot cleaner in appearance. So you do have a lot of different options to suit your aesthetic needs and also just to not make it look completely monotonous. If you are trying to look for something to um, break up your builds and you don't want everything to look like it was done exactly the same way over and over again, then you can start throwing some of these in in various different orders. So you have all these different styles. So basically it was whatever boards you could come up with at any given time and threw them all together as you got the building materials. So your wood build set does give you a lot of freedom to play around and really get a number of different styles of build in versus some of the other ones where they're much more uniform. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So here I have a stairwell that needs to be greater than one floor to actually reach the second story. So just like here, I had to raise up my platform so I didn't have grass poking through the floor. So in order to accommodate that, I needed to include kind of this second landing in order to get a second stairwell in. Now, when you have situations like this where you have multi-level stairs, then you're probably going to want some sort of handrail to go with it. Now, the concrete build set does have handrails that you can use, but if you notice right, most of them don't actually snap. The reason that most of these don't snap is that most of these are actually designed to connect to walls rather than floors. So the concrete handrails actually work differently. However, there is one handrail that is designed to snap directly to flooring, and it's this one that has this center crossbar in it. So it's the one that's kind of the more reinforced looking. A lot of people might not like using this because it's really broken up. There isn't an extra long one. People might just want to have fewer of these handrails to have to build. And the fact that they have to build two of these to equal one of those might just be more work than they're willing to put in. However, these ones do work very well because they will work even with these small landing floors like this quarter square that I used for here. And so now we don't have to worry about running off the edge when we reach our first landing. So we have these nice 
handrails to work with. Now let's go ahead and move up to the second level. So I just have various different pieces of flooring here just because that's what I had laying around, but all of these are going to behave exactly the same way. So I intentionally spaced my walls at a specific distance. So on this wall, I intentionally snapped the walls exactly how they're designed to snap. They connect to the outside edge of the flooring, much like the handrails do. But with this wall, I intentionally set it in to where it is completely flush with the flooring. And I set this wall so it's actually recessed. And I did that for a very specific reason, because there is another build set that tends to have a lot of build conflicts when it comes to having something interfering with it. And that is the Vault-Tec build set. So in the Vault-Tec build set under railings and stairs, we have a number of different rails that we can choose from. But you'll see they will not snap to the outside of our flooring, and it's not because they're designed to snap to the top of walls. They are designed to snap to the top of flooring, but the Vault-Tec build set actually extends below the base of the flooring. And so they see these walls right here as a conflict. They're also designed to where they slightly rest inside the flooring. So here, even though I set this wall to be completely flush with the base of the floorboards, I still can't snap vault -Tec railing to that wall. But over here where I recessed the wall by one set of floor squares, I guess that's something like six to eight inches or something, I can actually connect hand railing to this corner. So this vault -Tec railing can be used but you have to be willing and able to recess flooring that's underneath it, or you need to just completely free float this set of flooring. And so that's one thing that a lot of people will struggle with when it comes to actually working with the vault -Tec hand railing. It's by far the cleanest, it's by far the most decorative and looks the nicest when you can actually get it all to come together properly, but actually getting it to interact with non vault -Tec build sets can be a bit of a chore, but easily accomplished if we know what we're doing. So just to give you kind of a ground level view of what's going on, you can see here, we have all this vault -Tec hand railing, and then we have this recessed wall. Now, another piece of hand railing that I like to use pretty often is found under scaffolding. And so under scaffolding, they do have a miscellaneous section as well. And this miscellaneous section is just two different styles of handrails. Now, some people aren't going to like using these because they are slightly bent, but there are two styles. There's one that's basically the same dimensions as the concrete hand railing. And then there's one that's basically twice as long. So one that's designed to work alongside those quarter squares and one that's designed to work alongside the full square. And so you can see both of these are a little bit bent up, especially the extra long one. And both of these are painted. So they are a little more decorative, but they're also old rusted paint. So you don't really have an option for clean scaffolding, hand railing. If there was a cleaner alternative to this, this would probably actually be my favorite hand railing. You are probably starting to notice I am using this more with my settlement builds for noobs just to kind of break up the monotony of using my go-to hand railing, which is the quarter square and the concrete build set. And so these do kind of offer a little bit of variety, a little bit of variation, and it does offer some scrappy, aesthetic that a lot of other people just they feel is absolutely necessary so that is the scaffolding hand railing it's designed to connect directly to flooring so even though in scaffolding the flooring is actually slightly smaller there's actually small air gaps with normal sets of flooring whether it is the concrete or whether it is the wood they will still interact just fine without any additional coaxing now returning to the concrete build set, like I said, most of the concrete railing is not designed to snap directly to flooring. So you are going to run into these situations where if you are trying to use different styles of railing, 
they're not going to work. And like I said, the reason for that is that these are designed to connect to the tops of walls rather than the uh, sides of flooring. So here where I have the wall actually on the outside of the flooring, like you do see with all of my tower builds with most of my concrete structures in general, it does snap to the outside of the walls. So that's one reason why they don't snap with floors is they weren't designed to interact with that piece. And so you can still get that perfectly spaced hand railing. You just have to use this in the way that it was designed to be used, or you just have to get really good at eyeballing it and place them manually instead of snapping. Now there is this curved handrail, and this is designed to work with the curved wall, which is why I threw one of these in. So. This way, if you're working with any sort of rounded structures, then you can still put handrails on the top level. And then we do have this half wide piece, which is the same basic dimensions as our piece of railing designed to connect to flooring. And this just connects to the center of our walls here. Now this is designed to be used more in conjunction with the half width walls, like one of these. So then that way you kind of have many different options for your hand railings, whether you are using all just standard width walls, whether you're using a half width wall, whether you're using a rounded one, you have the option to put in your handrails on your top level. But it is worth mentioning that these are designed to go to walls and they're designed only for your top level. If you're trying to do an intermediate level, then your only option is going to be one of these guys. And so there you have it, folks. That is every style of handrail that is available in Fallout 4 without mods. So it's a pretty easy system to work your way around. It's just learning the limitations and the conflicts that exist within them. Definitely let me know if you found the information in this video helpful. I tend to find that these simpler videos tend to get a lot more feedback in the comment section, but they also tend to get lower viewership. So whatever I can do to improve this Commonwealth Contractor series, definitely let me know. With all that, I am ready to wrap up. It's been real. Until next time, stay safe, and I hope to see you all here next time on Gray gaming.